Welcome back to Oscar Overländer. Welcome back to your weekly dose of expedition truck build. This week we will talk about crawl through, pass throughs, you know, like in expedition trucks. A pass through from the driving cab into the habitat. We have that too. And how I built it, how I made it, and how I installed it, I will show you that right in this video. Before we start now with this video and the topic pass through, I like to answer some questions which came up in the comment sections of my previous video with the topic how to build my own skylight. So we had a, a gentleman, uh, we call him BH300, okay? <laughs> because I don't want to repeat that, you know. <laughs> so, and he's asking, can I ask why you didn't opt for an external shutterproof glass? For the rest, perfect. Okay, thank you for that. Shutterproof glass, let's quickly get to that or uh, talk about shutterproof glass. So what is actually shutterproof glass? What he means by that is laminated glass. I'm, I'm pretty sure he means laminated glass. Uh, the difference is two pieces of glass, get glued together with the PVB film, you know, and uh, build a non-shattering glass. I did not use that because the impact strength is not as high as what I've, uh, I have used. You know, I have outside six millimeter heat strengthened glass. You know, this is a heat strengthened tempered glass is basically sent before they, they glue the, the unit together. These take that one single pane send it through a con uh, on a conveyor through an oven, they heat it up by fire, you know, it starts glowing and then quickly it gets cooled down and through that procedure, it changes the structure the inside the glass pane, you know, and gets harder. Same as what the black blacksmith does with the iron in the fire and then he cools it down in a water bowl, you know, so that he changes the structure, basically it gets harder, the steel or the, the iron after that. So that's the same procedure, right? Um, laminated glass is actually uh, normal annealed glass. Annealed glass is the normal window glass. Yeah, uh, it's not heat strengthened. It's just regular flat glass and it gets uh, glued together with the film. Okay, uh, therefore the impact strength of tempered glass is a, is a, a multiple uh, higher than, than uh, uh, um, uh, laminated glass. Yes, you can temper glass and then laminate it together and achieve a higher impact strength, but the thickness of the laminated pieces are thinner than my six millimeter tempered glass on the outside. So the impact, uh, 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 impact strength of my glass is multiple higher than the laminated glass. And that is for me more important, you know, than uh, shatterproof. And I had a second question and it was about uh, what uh, program I'm using when I draft something. Uh, there was a gentleman called M-I-K-K-I-F-S, Mikifs. Did I say it right? I don't want to butcher your name. Okay, so great video so far. Looking forward for the next one. Small question. Did you make the detailed drawings by yourself or if so, what program did you use? Okay, so what I do is I'm a kind of old school, I'm not really a computer guy. I have a tough time to edit these videos, you know. Um, what I do, I, I do always hand sketches like that, you know, hand sketches from these ideas which I have. I, basically a partner of mine is this little booklet here, you know. I have a ton of sketches and notes in here about my build. Uh, sometimes they are burned pages because they are always on my work desk when I weld you know, and stuff like that. So I sketch things, you know, my ideas here, and then I basically bring it to paper. One thing is uh, when I showed you this profile on the, on the last video, and I basically uh, created the second part to it, you know, uh, how, how, how I do that is basically, I ordered, I ordered this part first, and I welded the frame as you saw in the video, right? And then I'm going to use a strip of aluminum you know, 
and take a duck bill and bend my little pieces the way I want it, you know? And then I always try, try to fit it on, uh, what, 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 oh yeah, like that, okay? So, you see, this is my original piece when I made it, you know, so that's, and if it doesn't fit well, then I bend it back and I rebend it, you know, until I'm happy. And then if this is okay, then I take a piece of uh, paper, you know, to put it on a piece of paper, I, I draw all the way around it, you know, and if I have the, let's say it's now like this, okay, like this, can you see it? No, so whatever, it's just a rough sketch. Then I take actually a, a angle finder, find all the angles and of course the length, I measure the length, and then I put it on an, on a better piece of paper basically, like this, you see this is from my uh, crawl through inner frame for example, and therefore I'm using a, you know, like, we haven't seen that yet, um, I'm, that's a kind of spoiler, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah, these are, uh, you know, so, uh, Jesus, we're here, here is this actually, this, you know, this part is right there, right, so, um, I put it on, on a piece of paper like, like this, you know, and then I send it to my flashing guy. And the program I'm using for this is not AutoCAD or SketchUp or anything else, you know, like that's an assembly. What I use is MGI. And if you find out what that is, you'll probably laugh about me because this is an, uh, a, a picture or an, an, an image editing program from 1998, I believe. <laughs> I can't even fit it on my new computer because Windows 11 or what it is doesn't take that old program anymore. So I have to use it at work. I have an older computer at my work, you know, and I, I do it always there. So, yeah, uh, I really I'm, I, I'm not patient enough to learn myself a new draftsman skill, whatever, you know, this is what I refuse to do. So the crawl through opening is created, is cut. So and I just finished cutting the frame for the gasket, you know, like the flexible gasket. So basically that's how, that's how it goes together. So and the frame, uh, you know, the gasket will be um, stuck on top of this lip. Now I have both frames uh, welded. I haven't cleaned the welding beads up yet because I'm going to weld in a one and a half inch by one and a half inch triangle right here, right there. Uh, it guarantees me that the gasket will hold on it. I just welded them in. Now I will uh, clean them up. The first frame is done. I cleaned them up now. This is the back side which gets glued onto the truck. Yeah. That's okay. And now the other side looks like that. Let's, let's put it on the ground and it's easier to see. No, the other side looks like this. It has now these, these uh, little corner uh, brackets in there so that my gasket has an easier way to, you know, not going to tight in there and then out again, and then easy around there. I have both both frames done now. Um, let's try to fit this in here. How it works, can you see? Yes, you can see it. So basically you tuck this on there and then it goes around. So, oh no, it's easy, easy. It goes around the corner now. Easy, perfect, happy, I'm happy. Right here, also on the outside, so the round corner is all the way on, it's the, the rubber sits on it. So that's the benefits of these uh, corner little brackets. 
Now let me get the, the second frame. That one basically sits vis-a-vis. -vis. Put this one on. I don't want to push it all the way on. Like I said, uh, if you do that too often, then this is not holding that good anymore. I just want to do it for the purpose of the, the video here to show you guys. Now, let's say this frame goes against the truck, right? And this frame against the habitat. So this side on the truck will be glued on uh, with uh, 252, Sika 252, like a strong, good holding glue. Um, and this side, I, will, I want to make this removable because I don't want to pull this gasket every time off. I want to tilt the cab. So I'm going to set up some uh, uh, rivet nuts with a thread in it, M M5, you know, and then put bolts through this frame here. Now, I have uh, all the uh, rivet nuts in it now, you know, and uh, now I can go ahead and basically reinstall the frame. There is a, a new gasket in it. It's kind of um, a soft gasket. It closes up right away. There's no daylight. No daylight can be seen through. So the interior looks like this. The, I have to clean this access glue back. But other than that, yeah, looks okay. So, okay. Now I'm going to install the second frame to it. Now I have uh, installed this assembly basically. You know, you can see here the inner frame, which is attached to the habitat with these bolts here. Yeah. Uh, and the outer one, which gets glued against the, the truck cap, you know, later on uh, permanently. So this is acting as a movable type uh, gasket. So you see there is movements, you know, like, uh, like this, push on that side, push over, and you see, shift it and snaps back. And the gasket stays in place. So excuse that I haven't cut this one, but this is not the final gasket. This is just for this kind of showing here, right? Um, uh, I will take this all off again before, because I need to finish the outside of the habitat, have to paint it, right? And this will be in the way. So that's why I'm taking it after the video off again. So, and the gasket gets uh, reinstalled, finally installed after the wedding. And the wedding is considered the, the day when two parts get together, right? That's what a wedding does. So basically when the habitat gets installed on the back of the truck, you know, and then basically frame to frame facing each other. And then the, the gasket gets finally installed. A pass through or a crawl through, you know, having it on the truck or not is a discussion kind of for himself. You know, it's a topic for himself. 
one people some people they say ah we don't need it we never needed it you know um and we we are basically um former rv users you know uh, it was kind of partly integrated rv like in c class c class rv so that's open in the back anyway you, you get up from your seat you turn around and you're basically in the habitat already right so that's why we're kind of used to that to have access to the habitat right away you know but this case is a little different because you need to crawl through a small space like this you know um a lot of people say you need a, a pass through uh, because you want to escape from some situations quickly you know uh, i don't think this is the right the right method for it you know uh, because uh, just imagine if i crawl now here through the hole you know or, or i come i come from the habitat crawl through the hole into the cap start the engine and i need to wait until i have six bar you know, uh, enough pressure on the air tank so that my brakes release. So if somebody wants your harm, you know, uh, they have you quicker through the door as you might like, you know. So that's not the right saying to escape from somewhere. I don't think it is the right thing. In case of a danger, what would uh, give you an argument for a crawl through is what about all of a sudden you're facing a huge downpour right uh, heavily uh, uh, rain and, and or hail you know like it's heavily raining and then you have to go and and you want to get out of it out of the weather conditions you know you want to continue on the road or somewhere else you know and uh, but you have to go through the door out of the habitat run around the truck and then get into the driving cab you'll be already soaked you know you start shivering freezing you know you got muddy feet already you know uh, and everybody else has to do it too, you know, your passenger, that guy has to do it as well. You have to clean his paws, you know, like, or he has it all on the poultry. Um, yeah, now, and, you know, this is one reason for me, you know, to have that thing. If it pours really heavily, you know, like not, I'm not talking about the little drizzle or something, so really heavily or hail, you know, then you just crawl through, you start your engine and off you go and try to find maybe a bigger tree is, is it advisable i don't know but you know at least you can go uh to a better place you know the other thing is we're dog owners for many years you know and when i look at my dog while we're traveling i see always he's laying down somewhere and then after a while he gets up he twins twice three times and then he lays down somewhere else you know and our previous dog did that and he does the same you know, I think that is an argument too. So the driving cab is not very big, you know, big enough for him, but not very big. So he probably can go through here, you know, and find a place in there, lay down, you know, while we're traveling. So more comfortable for him, you know, I would not recommend that people do it, you know, while you're driving, going in the back and lay down or sit down there, you know, that because there's no seat belts and it's not made for it. Another reason, would be um wildlife you know um just just one one little episode of out of my experience uh, my wife and i we went to kenya in africa you know uh, and we did a safari and we did a morning game you know and uh, it was very cold you know in the morning it's just quite chilly there you know and um, we came up to a group of hyenas, you know, and then we stopped right beside the group, you know, and uh, all of a sudden those hyenas get interested in us and uh, sneaking around the, the, um, the Land Rover, you know, and uh, it's, uh, uh, one of them crawled underneath the, the little truck, you know, and why? Because the engine was so warm, right? So, okay, now you want to leave, Feel free to get outside, go around the truck and then climb in and keep driving. Good luck. <laughs> so, and there you have it, a crawl through assembly, you know, in and outside. Why I brought this up now is basically, I just read it uh, in some of these uh, Facebook groups, you know, 
Uh, there is a uh, uh, four-wheeler groups and all for for self-build, a DIYler and stuff like that. There's um, a lot of groups, you know, and I, I'm I'm uh, subscribed to some of these groups, you know. Uh, I like the topics they're bringing up and some solutions and stuff like that, you know. Um, there was one gentleman asking, "Hey, how you did it? How did you do that with the uh, 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 crawl through or pass through? You know, and how did you assemble it? La la la." But the thing is, I cannot post my own videos there, you know, uh, because it is just not allowed, you know, in those groups. So that therefore, if you guys want to pay me the favor back, you know, or tip me, you know. Post my videos in those groups, you know, uh, link it there, help me out, help me go on growing the channel, you know, it would be much appreciated. So, yeah, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're an older subscriber, leave me a thumb up, you know, and uh, that's it for this week. And we see us next week. Next week, I'm showing you... Uh, something from what I, have, what I have done inside the habitat, you know, and in the week after that, I got something really cool, you know, uh, planned. And yeah, uh, stay tuned and we see us next week, Friday. Uh.